lack of generosity on the part of the one who had the power to forgive but wouldn't. And remember, it's a story that's told to drive home a message about how generous we need to be to each other. Peter comes asking, how many times must I forgive? The law says seven. Do I really have to do seven, Jesus? And Jesus laughs him off and says, not seven, but seventy times seven. And that's not so that Peter, he might struggle to add up to 191, 491 rather, so that Peter can keep score and go, right, 491 times, that's it. No more. But Jesus is saying to him, look, look, God is inviting you to share a kingdom, a lifestyle, a way of being which is rooted in his reconciliation and grace and mercy. So why can't you be the same? This is what God's like. And here's a wee story, Peter, to illustrate the point. We're invited to understand the story and embrace the story's meaning, to share the story and the generosity of God within it. Always and ever we're invited by Jesus in his story, in his teaching, by the gospel, by the whole Bible story indeed, to share this truth that God is greater. God is more generous. God is more forgiving than we can imagine. And his kingdom is for all who will live that truth. The truth that God is more generous and forgiving and gracious to me than I can ever imagine. And it sets us free. That's the great story we have to share. But as Lee Childs, the author of the Jack Reacher novels, points out in an essay on the writing of fiction, he says, once you've story, you always have the possibility of lies. Made up story that becomes somebody's truth. Once you've story, you don't not just the possibility of telling truth one to another, but you've also the possibility of changing the truth as you tell the story one to the other. Never in the history of our world has this reality been more important. How do we know where truth is? Whose truth will out in Russia over poisoned politicians, in America over we've not even had an, had an election and there's claims of rigging, in here over whether COVID tests are being done properly or not, or whether the regulations are right. What about the truth of here in Scotland over this proposed hate crime bill, which would allow the potential for anyone to complain about anything that you or I said that they didn't agree with, as not just being wrong or a false argument, but that it's hateful and doing down of others. No room for debate, let alone for President Macron's freedom to blaspheme. Is that a truth? As we're finding with these COVID restrictions, you cannot legislate tightly enough. You cannot find words enough to tie down and cover every possible scenario of how people might be in relation to one another. And you cannot stop people imagining ways round about whatever rules and regulations there are. Where does truth then reside? How do we measure facts against each other? What, as we say, is the acid test? So story and song are remembered truth. We sing of battles won or lost, of kingdoms rise and fall, 
The collective memory of Israel is held in the written records, the stories of the kings and the chronicles, but in the songs of the Psalms as well, there is a different edge to the story. In our own history, the story of the First World War is remembered in songs still sung, as well as the story of battles fought, of poetry written, of heroes healed, and as those heroes die out. And I'm not there to say, I was there and I know. So sometimes the story is rewritten from our own perspective. I was writing the sermon on 9-11 and the story of 9-11 passes more and more into repeated TV programs, into films, into conspiracy theories, into people saying, I remember I saw the second plane on the news or I was in X or Y place when the towers came down. The story can convey truth but it might often be truth shaped the way that we want it to be rather than the way that it was or is. There is a perspective that is more than just our own. So how do we tell our story, the gospel story, a story containing the truth of God? The truth that there is a God. Perhaps more and more by recognizing the Bible as a story carrying the truth of God's relationship with his people. And not as if it's like some kind of biography or law book or directive. Perhaps by getting beyond simply sharing with each other the few Sunday school type stories that we tell of Bible things. Maybe it's by asking which stories in the Bible resonate more for our times than others. Do we hear God's voice speak to us more clearly today by His Spirit when we look at the Passover and the exile story, the Exodus story? Or is it the exile story that the psalmist sang? The story of longing? Is it the promised hope of the Messiah? Or is it that the Messiah has indeed come and is our only true hope? And if the Messiah has come in Jesus, is he a warrior Messiah like Revelation? If he's coming again? Or is he still the Gospel's Prince of Peace? I think I'm winding up to an invitation, maybe the invitation that I'm always making in sermon, to dig deeper, to listen more seriously to the story, to ask where the truth of the story really lies in God who reveals himself in Jesus and the Gospels. In the one who dies and rises again and promises to come again. To listen to the story in the context of the God revealed in Jesus and Jesus' stories which say, look at how forgiving God is, how generous he is. How generous do I have to be, Peter asks. How generous is God, Jesus answers. You do the same. We believe God is generous enough that we can take him at his word, hold to his promises of forgiveness and grace in that moment of judgment when it comes for us so that we can learn to be generous and forgiving in all our moments now. Song especially lifts that truth in our hearts. We cannot measure how you heal, but we can sing that song and remind ourselves we're living in that truth of an unbelievably healing and forgiving God. Over a thousand tongues to sing, one voice is not enough to express the hope we find when we remember this generous God and his love for us. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land because he is with us. And though our praise be at odds with the way of earthly gods, we will praise him from the depth of our souls. Amen and may God add his blessing to these meditations on his holy word and to him be all praise and glory in the church and in the world.
listen as Leo now offers us some music for reflection. Holy God, who makes us with the earth, who gives us to the world, God with us. In our struggles, hear our fears and needs. Hold our hand as you walk beside us. Advise, encourage, and guide us. We pray for the world. We thank you for the blessing of life and nature, for the changing of seasons, reminding us that everything is temporary. We hold on to this as we continue to battle the struggles of this world in a global pandemic. We pray that the things which hinder us now be a memory in the future. We pray that we also learn from our mistakes and learn lessons from the crises of today to be kinder to the environment and treat your creation with respect and reverence. God with us, hear our fears and needs. Hold our hand as you walk beside us, advise us, encourage and guide us. We pray for the church and give thanks for the faithfulness of the church community and its undergirding of prayer in this time when we are not able to meet physically. We acknowledge the difference of opinion within the church about best ways to reopen and pray that God's wisdom and discernment will be sought. We seek guidance on how the church can increase and weave environmental concerns into our life and work. We pray for a desire to experience the joy of a deeper fellowship with all of creation. 
God with us. Hear our fears and needs. Hold our hand as you walk beside us. Advise, encourage, and guide us. We pray for ourselves. In silence, we bring our personal concerns to you, who knows and understands our deepest thoughts. We ask for your support and perseverance when we struggle, a sustaining sign when we get things right. We pray for those beside us, acknowledging and respecting what they cannot share with us. We ask you for a sense of impatience for change, rather than always merely accepting things the way they are. We pray for peace in our hearts and the fuller joys of Christ in our lives. God with us, hear our fears and needs. Hold our hand as you walk beside us. Advise, encourage, and guide us. Amen. We will now listen and follow the words um, of our last hymn, O oh, for a Thousand Tons to Sing. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you. 